Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review and a tutorial for you. Um, this thing here on my table, it's kind of interesting looking. It is a big light table. It's the light up LED light pad and uh, the model is LP2 and it's a fairly large surface. It's, it's, um, it's about 21 inches by 13 inches of light up space and it's for um, like tracing designs. A lot of times animators or designers will use this and um, I'm going to demonstrate it, give it a workout and uh, we're also going to paint a raspberry too at the end of the tutorial. So um, and I'm going to be using my Daniel Smith um, split primary palette because I had some people ask me to demo that and I will just do this all today. But um, this light tablet uh, is pretty easy to use. I just plugged it in and you just kind of hold your finger on it till it gets as bright as you want it and then you can let go. And you can see it lights up quite a bit. Um, I have my studio lights on too so it might be a little, uh, it doesn't look as, as bright. You can see how my hand looks almost silhouetted against it. So the first thing I want to try is actually using it as a tracing thing. And as you can see, it really shows up pretty well. And this is just pencil. I thought I was going to have to like um, do something in pen or actually just um, kind of go on the internet and, you know, print something off like a coloring book sheet so you could see it. But it shows up really well. Um, if you have a hard time seeing it, something you can do at home is you can actually... Um, you can turn off your lights and just have the light box on and it shows much easier as far as like transferring. So what I'm going to do is just uh, transfer this sketch that I made and this raspberry photo that I drew my sketch from is uh, from Paint My Photo and I will link up that um, photograph too if you don't want to uh, trace along with me. If you don't want to follow along with me here, you can just draw it yourself. And so I was able to draw this raspberry with a lot of detail um, and that way I don't have to worry about erasing on my nice watercolor card here, uh, which is something I like to do. I like to tra uh, draw on scrap paper and then transfer my drawing. A lot of times I do that with graphite paper, but then I am limited to having that graphite um, on my paper. I can't choose to use a pen unless, unless I want to go over my drawing with a pen and sometimes with some graphite papers I notice that I get kind of like a waxy buildup. Um, so this is a good solution for that and then of course you don't have to buy graphite paper if you have one of these. Now this is on sale for I think about $119 so it is an investment. You have to definitely think about how much you're going to use it. Uh, but if you have been in the market for a light table, it's not a bad price. Usually they're much more than that, especially especially rather if you're getting something this large. Um, I do want to mention that I did not pay for this. This was sent to me um, from the light up company on Amazon um, and they asked me if I would review it. And I was intrigued because I just have a tiny little um, like embossing light table that I've had, you know, since back in the scrapbooking day and it's small and it's plastic and it's not very good for for transferring drawings because um, I find that it's not big enough and it wobbles on me like this is very stable. This is very secure. I think I think this is probably like a plexiglass. It when I tap on it, it doesn't feel like glass, but it is a very hard surface. Um, I did email the company to ask if it was appropriate to use brass stencils. So when they get back to me, because I just did it, I, I should have done it sooner. Um, if When they get back to me, I will put that information in the video description. But um, as you can see, I got a really nice uh, image transfer there. I was able to see everything perfectly clear. Um, of course, if I was doing this, actually this, I keep, I'm going to keep plugged in over by my um, die cutter where I don't have a lot of light in the room. So it's a lot easier to transfer there. So now I'm going to show you how to use a brass stencil and I want to grab a little waxed paper because it helps the uh, stylus glide. So this is just a scrap of wax paper. And what I'm going to do, I think I'll zoom in a little bit to make it a little easier for you to see. Um, I'm going to rub wax paper on my paper where I'm going to be embossing. It just helps the stylus glide. Then I'm going to set this down on my light table and I'm going to put my paper, my cardstock on top and you can see that you can really see the design. So then what I'm going to do is use the fatter end of my stylus to go do the bigger parts. I like to go back and forth so I get both edges that I'm trying to um, emboss. And this is an old lasting impressions. Um, embossing stylus and plate. Actually, 
I'm not sure. Oh, the uh, the stylus is actually American Traditions and the plate is Lasting Impressions. But if you have any of these from back in the day, they work great for this. And you can actually use um, any of your plastic stencils as well. They just won't show up quite as well because they don't, they're not opaque like the, um, like the brass ones. That's why they use the brass ones for embossing. If you have something that's really detailed, what you want to do is use your smaller end to go in and then you can get those really nice details. So my only concern is that maybe having that brass against the surface might leave scratches. Um, so that's the only reason I want to, you to uh, check out the video description when I'm done and then you can see what they've what they've told me what they when I uh, when I hear back from them but uh, the company seemed very pleasant to work with but I do want to let you know that I did not pay for this they sent it to me um, as a sample for review okay so here you can see what you get when you do that I'm just gonna turn this off here um, you can see it a little better see so you get this nice raised image kind of like what you would do with your um, crank through embossing machine except you can do this or just do a partial portion of it and you don't get the um, you know shape around it it's just um, very fun and it gives you a really elegant look that I happen to like so what I'm gonna do now is um, is pause the video I really think this is a good deal if you're looking for a light table if you don't have need for one then you know obviously you don't have need for one, but um, this is going to replace the need for graphite paper for me because sometimes I find that my graphite paper does want to resist my watercolor when I go to paint on top of it. And this way I could go right in and put my my uh, illustration on my paper with ink. I could use, um, you know, any pen I want to or any pencil I want to, and I don't have to just be limited to what my graphite paper is. So uh, for me, I like that, um, but it is a big investment. I just want to let you know that this is a high quality product. It works. It was very easy to set up. All I had to do was plug it in, hit the on button, and I was off to the races. And um, if you can use it for embossing too, then that's going to make it more useful for crafters. And since I have three kids, I think school projects and whatnot would be really easy uh, for them to do. They might need to tra uh, trace a sketch or trace a picture for um, something that they're doing. So yeah, I think it's great. Oh, also another thing you can do with this, if you have old slides, like your old family photos are on slides, it makes it really easy to look at them. Um, you just put them on the on the uh, light box and then you can actually use a, a jeweler's viewing loop um, to look at the detail. And um, usually when I go and get my, my slides developed back in the day when you did uh, art photography when you photographed your art to, for galleries you had to send them on slides and you would look at them on tables like this so um, they were much more expensive back then so that you know it seems to be a high quality product and I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it and only you will know if you would get use out of it so I just wanted to uh, to tell you that and you can see how thin it is it's got uh, little bumpers on there with some cat hair that doesn't come included you do not get the cat hair with your <laughs> with your thing but it's got little scratch things on there um it's led so it doesn't get hot and it's probably fairly ec economical to run because you're not having it on that long and led doesn't use as much electricity as other types of um of stuff so i would definitely store it flat either in its box or um or someplace where you know it's not going to thing set on it because i would never set something on a surface like that. So what I have here is a just a watercolor card. That's what we're going to be painting on today. That's what I transferred my drawing on. And I am just going to pause it so I can clip this down to my painting board and we can begin painting. Okay, I'm going to start with a series of washes here and I'm going to use some Hansa Yellow, which or you can use Lemon Yellow or Cad Yellow Light. Let me just slide that plate over a little bit. And I am going to add a little bit of um, my phthalo blue to this. I'm going to get a really pale green. And this pale yellow green we're going to put right above the, um, the raspberry seed part. I'm actually going to blot my brush off. I have a little bit too much water in there. When you get too much water in your mix, you can go ahead and grab just more color and then blot your brush on a napkin and then go in. You just want to make sure you don't get too much color in there. It does fade when it dries. It dries a little bit lighter, I should say. Go in and get that. And then we also want to put a little bit of that color up here um, into these leaves. 
But as you can see, we've made this raspberry, raspberry really large, much larger than, um, than we typically would have it, than it would be in life. It's probably like five times the size of a raspberry. Like that. We're gonna have to let that dry and we'll be doing glazes on this to build up the color. And then um, I also want to do some wash on the fruit, and so I'm going to use some of this um, quinacridone rose, which is a really nice, pretty color. And I'm also going to use some pyrrole scarlet to make it a little more red. And you really can't make mud with this, um, with these six colors that I have here on my palette, which makes it really, a uh, really nice. So I'm just going to start by just putting this wash on the raspberry. Just take care not to go outside the lines. I'm not going to wash over the whole raspberry up here. I want it a little bit more yellow where the sun is hitting it. So in fact, I'm going to switch to a more juicy brush for this. This is a Princeton Neptune. I'll pause it while the um, water pump is going. I wet the rest of the strawberry, uh, the raspberry rather. I apologize for the water pump still going, but since I've wet the paper, if I don't get in there and add that wash in now, I'm going to uh, run into some problems. So again, my apologies for the uh, water pump. I also switched to a number eight Princeton Neptune. I had a much larger Neptune and it was just holding way too much, um, way too much water. So I am just going around the edges, letting the pink kind of flow. I'm working on a um, Strathmore watercolor greeting card, by the way. And I just want to bring that color up and around the edges. Oh good, that noise stopped. I know it's not as bad on, on a camera as the old pump used to be, but still, I'm kind of cautious of it. Um, now I'm going to go and grab a little bit of the um, New Gamboge here. I think that might be kind of pretty as a sunny glow. In there, I'm going to grab a little bit more of that. Let them blend together a little bit. And that's going to give us a nice, fresh look. I'm going to go ahead and paint the stem in. I want a warmer yellow, so I'm using the New Gamboge and the Thalo. It's a pretty color. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that in like that. Okay, so at this point I need to let this dry before I can do any more. Um, I think I do want a little more yellow, uh, yellowy of color in this area here, so that part should be dry. I can go in there. I just need to be mindful that I don't get into that red underneath or it's going to wick that color up into this, um, this area. So just got to be careful on that. And now I think I will just pause the video, dry this, and we'll come back and add some glazes to the uh, berry portion right down here, the red area. I'm going to switch to a nylon brush because um, it's not going to hold quite so much water so I can get a darker color. And I'm going with, again, my two reds. And I've got a rag handy so I can just tap my brush on it if I need to. It's definitely heavier on the quidacridone rose. And I am going to go in and add where I see the darker colors. And again, I'm looking at a reference photo from Paint My Photo. I'm going to go in and throw in a bunch of the um, darker shades and then I'll go blend them out because I have so much uh, pigment on my brush that I don't want to waste it define edges too. If you find you have any edges that look a little rough, you can go ahead and define them. Once I have a few done, we will blend. Let's just get this one in there. And then to blend, I'm simply going to rinse my brush off, blot off the extra moisture, and go right along the edge and it's going to soften that edge and let it wick out. And you can see that those portions of the berry have a lot more depth than the just the areas that had the flat wash. Okay, you can see they have a, just a little bit more roundness over there. 
I'm also going to need a, um, well, let's do, let's finish doing this with this tone, and then we're going to be doing a darker tone that's got a little bit of rose and ultramarine together. But we can, uh, we can keep working on this for now. And I recommend that you keep looking at your reference photo um, just to kind of really see where the shadows and the highlights are. As we're getting towards the front, it's mostly the um, the edges that have the shadows, and then the middle is just very, um, very bold and very bright. Just how the 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 uh, light's hitting everything. So again, rinsing and softening the edges. can always uh, blot if you get too much uh, coming over, if you get too much pigment, too much pigment spread. And I'm working probably quicker than typical botan botanical painters would for the purpose of the video. I would definitely slow down, take more time if I wasn't trying to record a video and keep it fairly, uh, fairly quick, fairly short, I should say. And if this is going too slow for you, feel free to use the settings feature at the bottom of the YouTube player, and you can um, and you can speed it right up. And I'll sound like a deranged chipmunk, which is an added entertainment bonus. But I'd actually like to do more artwork like this now that I have the light table because um, because I can control what I if I want to do pen and ink wash that would be so nice to do it that way not have to take that separate step of then inking uh, transfer design. It really opens up the uh, opens up that ability and anyone doing portraits, you know, they could always increase the size of a um, of a photograph that they want to work from and have a really accurate sketch to start with um, to make the, the portrait process a little easier too. I don't have a lot of paint on my palette because I wanted to use this up. This is some paint that I've had uh, on this dish, which I got the Dollar Tree actually, um, for about a month now. It's been on this dish, but I hate to just rinse it away because it's such good and expensive paint. It's a Daniel Smith. Um, so I like, to, uh, I like to use it up, especially if it's not all mixed. It will clean off of, you know, mixed stuff. Once you get going on it, you can be pretty quick. It's the same process over and over again. And if you love botanical art, but you're not crazy about drawing, there is, um, you can find public domain botanical illustrations online. There's a website called The Graphics Fairy that has lots, and they're free to download and print, and then you could just size them the way you wanted to, and then just, um, then just transfer them. Just pen and ink them onto uh, onto your watercolor paper. That'd be a lot of fun. I'll let you practice your your painting techniques without getting too hung up on the drawing. I like to draw, but I know not everybody does, and that's okay. You do whatever you want to. It's your art. You don't need to have judgment. You don't need judgment from the likes of me. You need judgment from the likes of anybody. You do what you want to do. You get that nice round juicy look when you have the light in the middle and the dark on the edges. It's more subtle up here where we've got the um, where we have the light coming through a little bit more. And we're going to build up another layer too, so it's not um, so it's not done yet. We're going to be getting it much brighter. You can use your brush to wipe away color just as well as you can use it to apply color, which is a fun effect. This one has a little bit of dark, but the top because we still we're trying to retain our light spots.
Okay. There. Now, um, I think I will go and work on the leaves a bit because it's not touching anything that we're going to be doing. I'm also going to move this little pan of, uh, of paint over here so that I can, whoops, I can uh, get some onto my plate right there for mixing. I just recently put those paints in pans so they would be, I could put them in a travel tin if I wanted to. And let's mix up some green. We're going to do, let's do the New Gamboge and the Thalo. I like that green. It's much more like a sap, much more like an earthy green. And let's go ahead and glaze some of that on here. Then we're going to grab a smidgen of the uh, rose and add a little bit to each side, just like that. It kind of gives you this reddish brown hint to it. You could use sap green here if you don't want to mix. But I specifically had some requests to use this uh, six color set just to so people could follow along that, that purchased it. And picking up some of the red. Just do a little bit of that. It's nice to mix with the colors you've been using. And you don't need a ton of colors. Sometimes it's just convenient to have those colors on your, on your, um, you know, like your sap green, your burnt sienna. It's just nice to have those, but you certainly don't need them. It'll probably be your, I think you become a better painter the fewer colors that you use. And most paintings look better if they have a limited palette versus a uh, over the top, like busy palette. Um, I did want to throw just a little bit of an accent on some of those. Okay, and then this part in there is going to remain pretty light. So what I'd like to do now is mix up some some of my deepest darks. I'm going to use the ultramarine. I don't think I'm going to put a background on this, so I think I'm going to try to try to be neat around the uh, the flower. Try to get this nice and deep colored here. Keep your rag handy so that you can blot your brush if you need to. And a lot of your darker colors are going to be along this edge, I've noticed. So I'm going in, especially in kind of like the little crease areas. Another thing you can do if you find that you need some more adjustment after you're done is that you can go in with colored pencils and adjust a little bit more. I don't think my paints were completely dry there. I'm going to add a little bit more color to some of that. That seems really purple to me. I'm just going to blot my brush and soften the edges so that I don't have any hard edges. I do have a couple uh, simple raspberry painting tutorials on my channel too if you want just like a very kind of just capture the essence of the berries and not really have a lot of um, have a lot of realism to it, but the, I mean, they look surprisingly realistic. It's just a different sort of technique. And that is on my channel as well. I'll try to remember to link up to it. And I find that with this layer, I can simply just wipe my brush off and then smooth it out. All right, you can see the difference between the detail there and how it looks a little bit less um, sophisticated over there. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this. And I am going to carry on like I have been. I'm just going to adjust my monitor. I'm looking at this in a, on a computer, my computer monitor. I like to do that. It saves paper. 
little bit quicker. Usually my kids are upstairs on my computer that's got the printer hooked to it, so I can't always get to my printer <laughs> or my computer that has the printer on it during the summer when the kids are home. So I'm putting this in the really deepest depths of the um, shadow area here, which is where the little bubbles kind of come together, little juice bubbles. So I'm just kind of outlining there. And if you can paint fairly quickly, you can get a bunch of this done before you have to go in and blend. Let's go in and get these deepest areas. Just like so. And then again, dry brush and blend. Just make sure your brush is always going in the shape of the fruit so that you get that nice, uh, realistic look. And I'm not going for hyper-realism here. I'm not going to take all day. I'm having fun. You can take as much time or as little time on it as you like. I find that these colors are fairly easy to lift up if I need to, if I need to go in with a damp brush and push them around a little bit. And maybe a little bit just up on the edge here. Whoops. Brush is too dry. There we go. You really want to accentuate the, ra accentuate the roundness of these. a little bit too much water in there, but that's all right. I'm going to spread it around where I need it and come back in, lift out the extra with my brush. I can do that pretty easily just by wiping my brush on my rag in between. Now I'm going to let that dry and we'll come back and do some more details to it. This is dry now, but I'm a little, I, I don't like how fussy this looks. So I think I'm going to do like a wash uh, over it. And I'm going to do the um, Pyrrole Scarlet and the quinacridone rose. See, it's got a nice, uh, making a nice juicy red. And I think I'm just gonna kind of wash over it, glaze over it. So hopefully I'll still be able to see what I've done so far. And, um, but it'll give it like a richer, juicier color. Cause I just feel like it looks, it's very fussy looking. And I think this will really help. I'm using a very soft brush because when I'm glazing, I don't want to um, I don't want to lift up the paint underneath. I want it to just kind of go on top of it and um, and just be kind of kind of light. And so here, up here where it's lighter, I'm doing. I rinsed out some of my pigment, and so I have a much um, a much more transparent, whoops, I went out of the lines there, much more of a transparent look. And then I want to look through, and if I have any puddles, I want to just kind of soak them up, because that otherwise I'll get blooms. Now something else I can do at this point is actually use some Q-tips to lift up some highlights. So let me grab a Q-tip, and you want to work pretty quickly with this, and just kind of lift it kind of in the center of each um, little section. And that will give you a nice rounding highlight. There, I like that a little bit better. I don't know if you could really tell how fussy it was looking. I could see brush strokes and I didn't like that um, previously. And I like the look of this a little bit better. I also think I need to do a wash over these leaves up here. I'm gonna go in with the um, the new gamboge and the thalo just kind of like a medium tone and actually I'm going to go switch over to the smaller brush I this a softer brush rather just because I know I can hold enough color in this to get the entire 
do all these leaves at once without any um, harsh lines. So I'm just going to go glaze over here. And I find stuff like that really just unifies everything and makes it look a little bit more cohesive. I also want to get some little, uh, not like fuzzy kind of thorns on the stem. It's fuzzies here. All right, now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. And I should have just started off with my Mimic brushes because I have such a larger range. Since this is fairly detailed, I am going in and doing small brush work, which I typically don't do very much just because it's not my cup of tea. And I'm going to go in and just hit some of the tips of those with the with that kind of maroony color that I had mixed. Watch out for beads of water on your brush because they can um, become problems if they back if they roll down the ferrule. And I'm also going to use that this a little brush, and I'm going to mix myself up a nice dark color. I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and the um, quinacridone rose mix there. And I think I will add some of my little green mix in there. So I'm adding a little phthalo to that, a little bit of yellow to that. Oops, a little more um, quinacridone to that, basically making a, a purpley brown little more of the uh, quinacridone there. We don't want anything too super bright. We want just kind of like a maroon color. And all these little uh, hairs that I've painted on there, I'm going to just put, I'm going to put little dabs first. This could be a little browner if you want. It's up to you. If you, if you can't get brown, you know what? Just keep mixing up your colors together and you'll eventually get to brown. And I'm just flicking in little uh, hairs from the little dots that I made. And you'll have a lot of these little guys up here. It's amazing the detail and stuff if you, when you take the time to look. Be careful going over the leaves. I just noticed I was getting some some uh, back runs there, just getting some feathered edges because I had gone on top of those wet leaves. I should know better than that. I thought they were dry by now, but that's not enough time to let them dry. Now while that's um, while that's drying, I'm going to mix up some of my darkest dark, which is going to be the ultramarine. And over there a little bit. Actually, you know what? It's a bad idea to mix with a little brush like that because those brushes are kind of fragile. I'm going to go over to this brush to mix. This is just my regular synthetic. They're all synthetics that I'm using here, but this one's a little more durable. It's a nylon bristle. It's actually meant for toll painting, but I find it works quite well for watercolor. It comes to a nice point. Mix up our nice dark purple there. And now you also don't get so much water in your mix when you're mixing with a stiffer brush like this. There we go. So now I can switch over to this smaller faux sable here, the Mimic. And I can load up quite a bit of um, of color on there. I'm gonna blast this real quick because I don't want it to I don't want it to run. There we go. I think that'll do the trick. I left it in real time because I thought you might benefit from seeing how long that takes. And at this point, I'm going in those little sections in between the uh, little fruits, the little, the little pods there, to give it that deeper shadow and make the little pods of juice seem much more juicy, much more full and fresh. Try not to dip into your brownish purple by mistake because you want this to be nice and clear and bright and fresh looking. Also pull out some more of those little hairs if you want to. It's actually quite a relaxing project. I don't find it tedious. Some people might, I suppose. 
I haven't decided whether I'm going to use a gel pen for highlights or just leave it as is. I probably will, just so you can see what it looks like. This is just a watercolor card. I'm not going to be using it for like a fine art painting or a contest or anything, so if I want to use a gel pen, I will. Sorry about the, the uh, furnace. It's uh, our hot water heater's on our furnace, even though it's so, even though it's like 80 degrees outside, it's, it still kicks on to heat the water for the house. But I'm gonna keep on trucking, keep on going. That's a little dark there. There we go, comes right up though, comes right up. Along here. And let's see now what we want to do. Sometimes I have to look at it in my monitor to see what I really should do. Um, now I think I want to do um, the some of the rose and a little bit of the scarlet. And maybe go in and just add a little bit of a cast cast shadow on some of these. Gosh, I wish I didn't tape this to my table because then I could pick it up and it'd be a lot nicer. It's building up the depth of these colors in layers. It's a lot of fun, but it can be tedious. This is more, it's more orangey up here, so I definitely want to get some of that color up here. More, uh, more orangey where it's closer to the light source there. Blend it with a damp brush. Maybe even some more purpley color, like the dark that we mixed, but more more rose in it. Just make sure your brush isn't too wet so you don't get back runs. I'm doing so good not to make any spatters on the background. Well, I'm just looking at the reference photo for places where we've got a deeper color. I don't have to worry about it spoiling while I'm painting it because it's a photo. And now I'm going to spread those out with a damp brush. I do kind of assembly line stuff here. Oh, I think I'm going to switch to a bigger brush for spreading that out though because that little one is getting very... making lines. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and now I'm going to go and do those little lines I couldn't do on the, um, up here, above the, I don't know what this is, it's like a hull or something, I guess you'd call it the hull. Got these little uh, hairs. The little seeds on them. I imagine they're seeds. Cause it's like a seed in every one of those little, those little raspberry pods, I think. I mean, if you ever have raspberry jam, there's tons of seeds in it. I hope I would just didn't lead in front of the camera. And I think I want the, uh, this area in here a little more yellowy. So I'm going to grab, I'll grab both yellows actually. Get a nice neutral yellow and go in there and touch that up. I am so not used to a tiny brush. Much more used to a big brush. Working on a big brush on the tip for details. 
that's all right. This is fun too. Okay, so now I think we're pretty much done. And if I want to add your uh, paper dry first, you need your paper dry first to add highlights for the gel pen. So I am just going to blast this with the heat tool, dry it all up. And I am going to go ahead and sketch in some highlights. Your first ones will look a little scary because you don't have anything else there to, uh, to compare it with. Just keep looking at your reference photo for where your highlights need to be or you can follow along with me. I'm going to do uh, right around there. There's so many little highlights. But I think the highlights really make it. You could also use masking fluid. Um, do this ahead of time if you prefer. Then it would be a traditional watercolor. You wanted to do this technique on something that you wanted to show or maybe just wanted to keep it traditional watercolor because well traditional watercolors are beautiful. Can't blame you there. Not everything will have a highlight on it. You've got to really look at them. I find that observing is such a great skill because sometimes you think you see something and then when you really look at it you notice the colors are completely different and the you know the pattern that the, like the little uh, the little bubbles make is completely different than what you had thought it's such a great skill just to just to take the time and look you don't have as many highlights over here in fact you could even put your highlights on over here and then glaze over them with paint because they're so subtle I'm just getting they get much, much less pronounced over here. There, this was fun. Well, there, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And um, if you did, check out our the uh, light box if you're looking for something like that. I think I might even put a little bit of a little bit of uh, this light up here and then I'll glaze over it because it's going to be too bright on its own, but I feel like I want that bit of lightness in there. Yeah, I think I do. So I'm going to let that just set for a second and uh, then I can go in and I can glaze over it. Maybe I will lighten this up a little bit though because I feel like there's not enough definition from the edge of this hull to where those little seeds are. And then let's see, I just want a really small wash over that so I'm going to use that tiny brush and I'll start over here. It can smear the ink if it's not dry yet so just be patient and clean your brush if you notice it smearing the ink. There. Now all you have to do is sign your name and you are all set. Uh, this was a lot of fun to paint. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a good time making it and I did like that light box that I reviewed. Um, if you're in need of something like that, that is the Light Up Company. I'll put a link in the video description so you can go find that. I'll also have a link in the video description to this reference photo by Elle on Paint My Photo. And, um, and I'll have photos of this finished project on my blog if you need to have a closer look. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and share it with your artsy friends. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.